All right, so buckle up. Here's how to set up Google conversions or conversions in Google ads using the Google Tag Manager and then how to use them as a campaign. This is for Webflow specifically, but it would also be relevant for Squarespace and for WordPress. So I'm going to do this for the conversion actions of phone calls contact form fills, email clicks and Calendly. And I hate it when tutorials drone on the beginning. So I'm going to jump right into it. At the end, I'm going to talk about why you should be doing this. But here's what we're going to cover. We're going to set up the tag manager on this website. We're going to add the variables that need to be in there. We're going to set up the triggers for each conversion. We're going to create the tags that will fire for Google ads and then Google Analytics. And then we will use the conversions in the campaign. So this is going to be how to do it from a fresh website. We're going to be looking at here. Uh, buckle up. Looking forward to help you out here. All right. So the first thing I'm going to show you is that we have a, a series of, of different actions in here that are going to be used as conversions. So I've already gone in and I, I've actually formatted this. If you take a look at the phone number, how I use the phone number is I type in T-E-L, in fact, I'll just copy this. So let's copy the link address and I'll post it right here, maybe in Google so you can see it. Um, T-E-L colon plus one and then the phone number without any dashes. Whenever you're doing conversions for phone numbers, I think it's really helpful to go in and make sure that it's formatted properly. Now in Webflow, the way this would work, if I made, so every phone but button here is going to a link that's this link. Anywhere you have the phone number, I think you should wrap it in that code. Now we're using buttons here. They're pretty point blank um, or pretty straightforward. They're not too complicated, right? And then we're going to have a form down here on the bottom. But the first thing that I would recommend is make sure that anytime your phone number, whether this is on a form or a contact page or here, make sure that it's wrapped in a consistent manner with a consistent URL because this is how we're going to trigger um, the, the conversion. The second conversion that we're going to do here is we're going to use this form. Okay. So ultimately what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, we're going to set up Google tag manager and we're going to have Google tag manager, which basically fires and, and sends signals between Google ads and Google analytics and other Google properties. But what we're going to do is we're going to say when this link is clicked, then that is a conversion action. And we're going to have that sent to Google ads so that it can be used in a campaign. I'm also going to send it to Google Analytics as an event, and then we're also going to use that event as a goal so that you can track how things are going in analytics. It's really helpful to do that. So you're going to learn that here. Um, and then down here, we have this form. Now, what's really beautiful about forms in um, Webflow, and most forms are this way, I'm going to use the form ID. So that's the second thing what we'll do. The easiest way to do this is to click into the first box in a form and do right click and then go down to inspect. And what we're going to do is we're going to move up. Um, you'll see that it's a cascading flow of code, right? And so if I click in there and then I move up, it says form ID. And here, if you look, is my form ID. It's ID equals and then in between the parentheses here, I know that it's email form dash two. So again, um, that's the easiest way to find the form ID. I like using form IDs um, in, in, so that's what we're going to use. We're going to tell Google ads when this, or we're going to tell Google tag manager to fire a, a trigger when this is set up. So um, I'm just going to paste this over here so we can come back to it. So these are just both right there and right there. All right. So now let's set up Google tag manager. Again, tag manager is something that is connected to um, Google analytics and some of the other Google ads and it can fire in a lot of areas. If you don't have a Google tag manager set up when you're in your analytics account, if you haven't set this up, go to analytics.google.com. Um, but what you'll want to do here is uh, when you come up here, you hit this drop down, um, you have Google tag manager right here. And right now this is showing me all my accounts. We could go to visit that platform home, which would bring us to this page that I'm looking at now, right? So once you're at the platform home, you can choose Data Studio, which is super powerful, or Google Tag Manager. Let's keep moving. Um, I'm going to create an account here, and I'm going to call this Regenlong. Um, I'm going to say it's in the United States, and I'm just going to copy and paste that domain real quick. And it's just that. We're going to hit for web, and I'm going to say create. Now, if you have a web WordPress website, you will want to use the Google... Um, the Google kit. So search for plugins. There's a plugin that allows you to set up the tag manager, the Google search console, 
Google Analytics, basically everything that you'd want on your website. Now for this site, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab, there's two pieces of code here and I'm gonna show you how to do this in Webflow because Webflow is the tool that I prefer. I'm gonna come into this site and I'm gonna to go to Project Settings and when I get into the settings, over at Custom Code here, I'm gonna I'm gonna paste in two portions of it. So you have one in the head and then one in the footer or the body tag is what it is, but you'll see. So I just copy that, paste it in, Really, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Regen look. There we go. Um, and down here to the body. We're going to hit Save Changes, and we're going to publish those changes. And ooh, haven't taken that down yet. So once that's there, uh, we're going to let that fire. Give it just a second. Now, the beauty of Webflow is that it seems to, the changes occur very quickly. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to hit OK. And, uh, and that's the first step. Now, the second thing I'm going to do, I actually have not created a Google Analytics account for this yet. So um, I'm going to come into Google Analytics and I'll just go on mine um, and we'll get into my account here. And then I'm going to go down to admin and let's just create a, a Google Analytics account. Um, there's two different types of account right now. There's this UA4 um, I've just been sticking with the traditional one right now, but what you have here is you have the account, then you have the property, which would be the site, and then over here would be the view. Well, I'm going to be handing this off to another client, so I'm going to create another account, right? I just want to make sure. I can't remember if I did this yet. I did make a regen long. So if it, what I would do is create a new account and then create a new property, but I have created this already. Um, so let's go over here to regen long. And down here... I'm going to hit admin and what I want to find is I want to find this setup assistant, right? And oh, this is the UA4 one. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fire this analytics. I just always start with setting up analytics on the page. So we're going to go to tags and what we're going to do is say new tag and we're going to call this the analytics tag. And this is a little different. So um, usually I do the UA type, not this, this, what is it, whatever it is, four U4 or whatever G4. What is it called? There's two types now. It used to only be one type of analytics, but now there's two just to keep you confused. Um, so analytics, I'm going to say fire this tag and I'm going to see it's a GA4 configuration uh, rather than the regular one and measurement ID. That's what I'm looking for. Let's go find the measurement ID. So what you're going to do to get this ID is you're going to come in again. I'm down here in admin and you're going to go to property settings and over here is the property ID. I'm going to copy that. And bring it back over. We're going to hit boom. And fields to set use properties. We'll just kind of ignore most of this because we just want a simple um, setup triggering. I'm going to trigger this on all pages. So that's the first thing. We're just going to set up Google. Uh, that's not the right one. Hold on. All right. So I, I kind of got confused there. We're going to go to um, setup. <laughs> the previous thing is not correct. So just buckle in here. We're going to go to tag, uh, setup assistant tag installation. You're going to say add a stream and we're going to do a web stream. Um, it looks a little different the first time and you're going to hit yes. You're going to type in and hit your, um, your domain right there. Name it and then hit create stream. And now I just did this because I had to double check. I forgot how to do that again. Um, so the web stream details are right here and what you'll see is the measurement ID. So let's grab that again. Let's come back to measurement ID and put in a legit measurement ID, boom, and it's going on all pages, we'll hit save. <clears throat> all right, so once that's there, let's submit it real quick, and analytics ID, I don't submit every single time, but let's just start with that, and what we can do here is we'll come open that, let's go to regen long, and there's a little Chrome tag manager that you should probably look, it's the tag assistant legacy, I'm going to enable this and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to ref, uh, refresh it, reload that page. And what this will do is it's going to start it back up and tell me whether or not. Um, yep. So I've got Google Tag Manager and the glo global site tag. They're both on there. That's good. So we know that that's firing now. We're going to go in and we're going to add the variables that we need in order to create the triggers. And then the triggers are going to be firing tags. So you got variables triggers, tags. So variables, we just need to give us the option to be able to use these in a conversion action. So once you hit variables, go over to configure. And on the right hand side, what we're going to add is we're going to make sure we have um, click I, uh, what is it? Click URL. Um, that's probably my favorite. And then we've got form ID are the ones that 
I usually use, you can add in many more. And again, there's a couple ways to do all this. Um, so don't feel like this is the only way, but once that's there, you just exit out. And now we're gonna create the trigger. So I know how I, I've already done the homework to show you exactly how I'm gonna do this. On one of these is gonna be when you click this URL as a link, that's gonna be a trigger. So that's the phone call trigger. So let's go back in here and we're gonna say new trigger. And the trigger is going to be a phone, so click to call, um, T-E-L is how I usually name it. I'm going to go configure. Now over here, this is going to be links, just links is how this is going to fire. And if you were to do all links, that wouldn't be good. We're going to do some links. And then what we're going to do is define this even more carefully. And we're going to say click URL. And then we're going to say it is it equals this. Okay, um, and then I'm gonna hit save. So that's my first trigger, and that's loading. Now the second trigger I wanna do is I'm gonna do the form ID, so form fill out. Uh, real quick reminder, when you're on these sites, you have to be careful. There could be multiple forms. Um, I know that specifically I want this form, so again, I went into the beginning here. I hit inspect in Chrome, and then all I did was Kind of, I saw that there's no form ID there. I move up a couple layers and I see the form ID and it's form ID right here, email form two. And I want that precisely, but know that, in fact, my developer and, and I, we build these with very distinct names so that we understand exactly what we're doing. But every form might have a different form ID. And then in w WordPress, it's even more annoying is they might not be able to be distinct. I've had it where in Divi, you can't even rename them. So it, it's it's difficult. There's other ways to fire this. This is how I prefer. So form, form filled out ID, however you want to name that. And now what I'm going to say is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say form submission is how we're doing this. We're saying some forms, not all forms. All forms, you might say, hey, let's just do all forms because if any form is filled out, that's a conversion action. I have seen that not work very well. I would really not use that. I've set it up where you test it and it looks like it works fine, but there are functions within websites that submit forms and I don't I don't fully understand. Maybe it works for you. It hasn't worked for me. I've set it up that way and then I've seen like, oh, you've had hundreds of form sub submissions and it's like, what? And then I get in there and it's like, oh, when you log into your WordPress site, it was firing or um, if you, I don't know. I'm not really sure why it did it, but it created way more conversions than were real. So there's some free tuition for you. Um, don't use all forms. It doesn't work. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm saying some forms. So form submission, some forms, and then let's go to form ID. And then I'm going to tell it exactly when it equals, not contains, but equals this form ID. Now I'm not putting in the quotation marks. And by doing that, we will have two new triggers. All right. So the first thing... I, I could go in and I could test this already, but I'm gonna add a couple more things before I test this, right? I really don't necessarily love testing um, or, or publishing right away as fast as I possibly can. The first thing I wanna do is let's do a tag and I'm gonna create a tag. One of them is gonna be for analytics um, and I'm gonna say call event, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say whenever this it's going to be an event. Oh, sorry, I went a little fast there. So I, because this is a GA4, I'm going to use GA4 event. Otherwise, you could use Universal Analytics if that's what you were using. But I'm going to do GA4 event, configuration tag. Um, here's our analytics tag. I could have named that a little bit differently, but that's what it's called. Um, so that's you have to select the tag. We had already saved that. That's that, that ID that I had put in there. And the event name, let's call um, phone call clicked um, and then what we'll do is we're going to trigger that by the click to call tel and we're going to hit save so what that will do is fire an event when that happens uh, and then we'll do the exact same thing and i'm starting with analytics we're going to move into google ads but first i want to do analytics so analytics form event and i'm going to say tag configuration ga4 event Select that one. I should have named this a little more distinct. And now this is going to be form, form filled. Come down here and the trigger. So 
uh, form filled out ID. So basically now what we're doing is we're saying whenever you fill those up, it will create an event. So we'll just events created, hit publish, give that just a moment. Um, and then what I'm going to do here is we're going to do something a little interesting. We're going to preview this folks. So let's hit preview. And as preview comes up, I'm going to type in the Regen Lung URL. And what this will do, this is a little bit different. I have another video that shows how to do this in the previous version. <laughs> Literally a, within a week, they, they reset it. So what you need to know is this is the debugger. So Google Tag Manager debugger is firing. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to click this once. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to, and I'm going to test this, right? So I'm going to say Rob test test at, or we'll do Rob at. Inquiring about testing. All right, so now we did both. Now what I can do is in this other tab, you can see it's it's going on and off. We can we can come over here and we can look at what happened. So on the left here, we see that there was a link click. Analytics call event was fired when that hits. That means that it worked. And then we have scroll depth, um, which we didn't do anything with, but. Here we go, analytics form event. Now, if I were to come over to this, I should be able to go into this uh, these analytics and go to real time and go to events. And I would, oh, it's always different. Curses. We got two. So if you look here, we've got a couple of, couple of users. Where are the events? We've got three events. There they are, page view, which is an event, form filled and phone call click. So now we know that's working. Can you tell in Minnesotan folks? Now we know that's working. And, and honestly, um, if I go to engagement and events, this is the GA4. I'm not as familiar with this. I'm usually in the UAs. And uh, we'd have to go to today in order to see this. So I, and I don't even think the real time. I don't remember how long it takes. But right now it's just in the real time. So you'd go to real time to make sure that it works. So I see that it is working. So that's good. We have conversion actions working. All right. So let's close a couple of these 9 million tabs. So as of right now, where we're at, if we look at these tags, we've got the basic, the analytics GA4 is set up. We have the analytics call event is occurring, and then the analytics event is happening, okay? So that's good. I'm going to jump in real quick, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get into the Google Ads, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to do um, the first thing you can't forget about. The, I, we can leave this now. We don't have to be in that mode. So we're out of preview mode. Um, there's one more tag you always have to fire. So go to tag, hit new. Before we do this, it's the G ads connector. And Google ads. And what you have to do is you have to go this Google ads conversion linker. Um, and that's going to be on all pages. So just the conversion linker on all, enable linking on all page URLs domains so we'll just do that hit save and boom that's a weird one I kind of forget I have to do that sometimes so linker added and all I'm doing is kind of cre creating a little uh, audit path right to show what we've been doing all right so now let's go into this Google Ads account I'm using the expert mode Google Ads if you're using uh, Google Ads and you see that it's not the expert mode go over to the other side and there should be something here that says switch views, go to expert mode. Up here in the tools and configuration, we're going to go to a uh, couple of things here first. First, let's go to Google Analytics and connect this Google Analytics, okay? Um, that's always the first step that you want to do is make sure everything is connected. And then generally speaking, you'll come down to admin and you'll go to Google Ads linking. And everything's a little bit different. We're going to go link. And then what I'm going to do is... Choose Google Ads account. Um, yeah, this is going to be, boom, right there. So I've already been added in there. So I'm going to connect that, and I'm going to confirm it. Next, configure settings. Um, next, and submit. And now I've connected Google Analytics with your Google Ads account. Uh, if that wasn't, if it didn't look like this, this is in the GA4. It looks a little different in the UA Settings, there's a tab there that says Google Analytics, add, 
or you would just do it right in here. But uh, again, there's a couple of accounts that you'll want to set up. The linked accounts over here in Google Ads, again, toolbox, linked accounts. This is where you can see the details of your Google Analytics. Um, and then the other one that you'll probably want to do is add in your YouTube channel. That's an important one, right? You want to be able to advertise to anybody you've talked to on YouTube. Hit details, hit add channel, search for your channel name and add it in there. We don't have a channel for this guy. Um, so again, we're going to go up here. And the other thing we're going to do is before we get into these conversions, let's go to audience manager. Again, this is like a fresh site. We've hardly done anything. We're still kind of finalizing everything. We're going to hit this set up an audience source. And right off the bat, what we're going to do is it's going to use the Google Analytics code as an audience. Now, remember, audiences are used for uh, remarketing, and that is super helpful. So the idea is people have come to your website and you want to serve up some YouTube ads, Google display ads, or make them a subgroup for a search ad and just hammer them when, whenever they enter that audience. That's what you would do. So you'll want to make sure that you have audiences set up. And that's really the most basic is make sure that you just hit up the audience source and make sure that analytics is turned on. If you didn't do analytics, you could do the, the audience here. You would set up a tag and you would go new. And there was that, uh, so G ads audience. This is another approach. You'd go Google ads remarketing, right? And then the conversion ID uh, label, and, and you could set it up that way. But I'm not going to do that. We're just going to use the audience that we've brought from Google Analytics into this, which is right here. And now we'll be able to see the audience, uh, audience, and audience lists. So boom plus, we're going to go website visitors and website visitors so bear with me anybody who visits any page um, we're gonna do any page URL contains and then you would just put like your URL in there so regen lung that's what we're doing I always like to just copy and paste this <laughs> A fat finger. Sometimes you just want to make sure that you're really careful, right? And uh, so all we're going to do is regenlung.com. Um, so that's about it. And we're going to hit save. Now we've hardly done anything with this, right? So boom. Oh, and then audience sources again. Let's just double check. It's a little bit different in this G4 thing. We're going to hit details. And boom, all lists, GA4 lists. Oh, that's right. What we'll want to do is come over in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create, oh, it's a little bit different. And this GA4 is just a little bit different. Property user management, property settings. Anyways, let's move on. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to go into Google Ads. Here's the most important part. We're going to set up conversion action. So hit the gear, go to conversions. Once you're in conversions, what we're going to do, boom, they're already in there. See, GA4 is slick, right? Um, phone call lead. Uh, my guy dinked with it. That's what it is. So I'm going to remove both of these. I'm going to remove both of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up our own. And I'm going to import. Well, no, let's. Yeah, we'll just create our own. So website. I actually use website for phone calls because I want to have better control over it. Uh, than what they give me. So um, I'll, here, the first thing you're going to do is do a category. And I just say uh, sign up or lead is usually a submit lead form or contact, right? Let's just go with contact here. Uh, so it's a contact. We're going to do click to phone call. We're not going to put a value on it. And we're going to say 30 days, view through conversion window one day, including conversions. Yes. Last click model. That's fine for this one. We're going to hit next, and then we're going to fire it using Google Tag Manager. All right, so now this is the point you really want to get to, okay? We're going to go to Conversion ID. We're going to copy this, and we're going to go back into Tag Manager, and what we're going to do is set up a tag that says New. Um, so G Ads, Call, Click, Conversion. However you want to stay organized in this, I'm sure you have a better way than I do, but we're going to do Google Ads Conversion Tracking. And we're going to say conversion ID. We're going to paste that right here. And then we're going to take the conversion label and we're going to paste that right there. Boom. And that's what we need. Trigger. 
Now this one's going to be the click to call trigger. So now we've said when you hit, when that trigger fires, boom, we're going to fire this Google ad. We're going to hit save. And what we're going to do is just hit next and say done. Now the other one we're going to do is we're going to do website. We'll do the same contact and we're going to do form submitted. I'm naming those a little unique so that it doesn't get, um, in fact, sometimes I'll put FW on it so they know it was me that did it. Um, so every time a form is filled out, all of that, I'm just going to leave the same. That's fine for now. And then I'm going to say, use Google Tag Manager again. Boom. Let's come over and let's create another tag. New um, JADS form filled. Tag configure Google Ads conversion tracking. Skadoosh, Kung Fu Panda, Skadoosh. And we go like this. So conversion label, conversion ID, fired upon form filled out ID. Save. All right, so now what we've done is quite a few things. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this Google Analytics, and this is just different, so I don't know if this is, yeah, we're gonna leave this. If you weren't in the GA4 property type, I would have hooked up the goals, but it seems like this is already making a little bit better situation. I'll admit it, there's a lot in this GA4 that I'm still learning. Um, all my clients are in the UA except for the new ones. I'm just trying these out just to see how it looks. So, all right, now what we have to do is we have to submit this and we're going to say ads are added. Um, put in Google ads conversions. We're gonna hit submit or publish. Once that's published, what we're going to do is we're going to come through, we're going to test that again. We're going to say preview. And we're going to do Regen Lung, hit start. It's loading up that window. It opened up in another one. And let's just click through. So we click to call. That's good. Um, I'll even just mouse over it and make sure. What am, what am I click? We've already gone through and audited a bunch of that. Um, and then down here, we're going to fill out the form. So... Rob, test, Rob, FD Backrench, and test, and submit. All right, so now what we're going to do is let's go back and let's see what actually fired. Ah, could not connect to Regen Lung. That's not helpful. Um, <laughs> that's annoying. All right, connecting this window to it. Do I have too many open? Is that what's open? Minnesotan, do I have too many open? Uh, we can see over here stuff is firing. So the page view is firing. We've got page view, user engagement, first visit, session, form fill. Oh, the form fill didn't fire. So we'll see what, what happened here. Oh, that was. All right. I have no idea why this isn't working. So we'll try it one more time. All right. I did had to have to refresh everything. So... Um, it opened it up over here. I can see debug information on this page is viewable in the tag manager. So again, we're going to hit call. We're going to make sure that works. We're going to hit get started, and then we'll go to the forms. Um, so Rob, FD Backrench, testing. Now, this is, that's one. And we'll go back to the home, and we'll test out the other one. We'll see if this went twice. So Rob, test. All right, let's head over and let's see how it was going. So we've got um, form submission. So we region of contact form, contact form. So we've got a couple of things that happen here. We've got the region long lock close. Oh, that's from before. Here's the new session here. We've got form submission. All right, looked like that worked. Analytics form, Google Ads form filled. Both of them fired. Scroll depth, that's a whole other thing. Um, window loaded. It looks like everything worked out just right. Link click. Here's that phone number. Um, I do need to make sure that that worked. So let's go try that again. I don't know that I see the phone number firing. Let's see how that worked. Link click. There it is. Call event and Google Ads conversion. All right, folks, it looks like things are working here. Um, let's go back in here. And what I like to do is create a conversion set. So we're going to say um, all this is going to do is bucket these conversions so that they're easy to use in Google Ads um, so that it works really well. Again, um, so feedback wrench conversions, we'll add the two of them in there. We will hit save, and now that's a conversion group. Now, 
Here's the whole thing. The reason why you want to make sure that you use Google ads like this, um, and, and there's a version of this for Facebook, LinkedIn, and the idea is there's different types of campaigns, right? You have a campaign that's made for just clicks or ad awareness, or it could be for phone calls. But when you set up for Google, or when you set up for conversions, what you're going to do is equip Google to um, use its machine learning to pursue what happens. So as it starts to get some of these conversions under its belt, which it needs to go through a learning phase. It has to get conversions. What it's doing is it's spying on who are the type of people that actually convert for this. So the result will be that your campaigns will get incredibly efficient and will get much smarter as they go on. So you'll want to make sure that you pay attention to that. But that's how you set up Google Tag Manager. That's how you do a phone call setup. That's how you do the form fill setup. Um, and then I've got another video if you check it out, how to do Calendly. I think Calendly booking is an incredibly powerful tool that you can do. It's a little bit more convoluted. Or it's not as straightforward to get in as the event. But if you like this content, like and subscribe. If you'd like help, if you just want somebody to do this, feedbackwrench.com. We'd love to help you. Good luck. God bless.